let's talk about how you can extract data, commonly phenotype data, from the cohort browser. There are two main ways that you can extract this data that we'll show you. The first way uses an app from the tool library called the Table Exporter app. This Table Exporter app is commonly run in the GUI, but can be run locally in the command line using the DX Toolkit. The second option uses the DX Toolkit command called DX Extract Dataset to programmatically extract data as a standalone command or from within an interactive workstation like Jupyter Lab or RStudio Workbench. Let's first look at the Table Exporter app using the GUI. So here's a screenshot of the Table Exporter app where you'll need to provide three inputs. The first input is the phenotype dataset file, which can either be the cohort dataset that you created in the cohort browser or the full dataset that can be found in the root directory with the .dataset extension. Next, we need to provide a file containing the list of field names. So for example, if we're extracting proteomics data, this file can include things like the participant ID or EID and protein names. Last, we need to provide the entity table from which we are extracting the data from. Again, for example, if we're extracting proteomics data, the entity table would be of the form olink underscore instance underscore number. And so that's using the Table Exporter app. Next, let's show you how you can do this programmatically using the DX Extract Dataset command. Here is the DX Extract Dataset command and what it looks like, where we'll need to provide several input parameters. First, we need to provide the identifier that's associated with the phenotype dataset file, which looks like the following, project ID colon record ID. Next, we need to provide a list of field names that we want to extract, where this list of field names has the form entitytable.fieldName. So for example, if we were extracting proteomics data, the entries would look like olink underscore instance underscore zero dot EID. Then finally, we need to provide a file to output our results to. 